With almost 12,000 restaurants employing over a quarter of a million people, a total of 95 Michelin stars, and one of the highest food outlet to person ratios in the world, it's fair to say that Hong Kong remains a foodie mecca. While there are plenty of great sit-down places in this high-rise city, the beating heart of Hong Kong's food scene is undisputedly on the street. And that's why in this episode, we're heading to the city's street food capital, Mong Kok, to seek out some common roadside snacks. Because it's such an auspicious number in local culture, we're going to try precisely eight quintessential street foods to celebrate the unique culinary tradition of this incredible city and to see which ones are harder to stomach than others. This is all coming up on Hong Kong Hoods. One and two, curry fish bowls and siu mai. Hi guys, welcome and thank you for joining us for our street food tour of this fantastic foodie neighborhood. We're signing off today at one of these street side street food takeaway shops that are dotted around the city. And I've gone and got myself two absolute musts when it comes to trying Hong Kong street food. I've got yudan or fish bowls and sumai dumplings. Fish bowls are made from boiled fish paste and cheaper ingredients like flour. And siumai are basically little street food dumplings. And they're often served together at places like this, but you can also enjoy them separately too. Now, being completely honest, neither of these pack much of a flavor punch on their own. But luckily, they usually come doused in a spicy curry sauce that really adds some flavor to the equation. And just like, as is the case with all other Hong Kong street food, they are very affordable and very filling. Let's try them. Mmm, that's lovely. Yeah, it takes a second, but does that sauce have a bit of a spicy kick to it? Ow, ah, really nice. Okay, so the fish bowls are a lot more bouncy than the siu mai. Give me a second. Oh, a little bit hot. Siu mai are a bit more chewy. You can sink your teeth into them. But regardless, they're both incredibly, incredibly Moorish, and they make for the perfect street side pick me up when you're on the go. Let's try something else. Three deep fried pig intestine. So another street food that a lot of the locals go crazy for is za dai chung or fried pig intestine and it's made from well pig intestine gotta say i am pretty nervous about trying this because yeah it smells like exactly what it is uh, but i gotta do it so wish me luck oh god this is not, I repeat, not for the faint of heart. It has got a gamey, it's a very, very strong animal flavor. Um, oh, the texture's not bad, I'll give it that. The outside is crispy, kind of like bacon. I do like bacon, but inside, it's a lot more chewy and almost gristly. I squirted some mustard on, as you can see at the advice of the lady behind the counter, and it helps. Uh, but I'm gonna to have to say, although I deeply respect people that uh, can and enjoy eating this, this ain't my cup of tea. I'm gonna to have to say, nope. Next, let's move on. Four, rice noodle rolls.
This is Chang Fan, uh, which is rice noodle rolls that are drizzled with a variety of sauces, including soy sauce, hoisin, and then they're sprinkled with sesame seeds at the end. Now, these aren't counted as a Hong Kong street food dessert, but I personally think they are definitely one of the sweetest of the Hong Kong street food snacks. There's a special little interplay between the sauces, which gives them the flavor, and yeah, it's delicious. The noodle just creates a bounciness, but the saltiness from the soy mixed with the sweetness from the hoisin and then the sprinkles on top of the sesame seed to give it a bit of the nutty, earthy flavor, all go to make this one of the most incredible Hong Kong street food snacks, and I swear by it, yum. Five, stinky tofu. So, uh, stinky tofu gets its stinkiness from being fermented, and it's usually fermented in a broth containing things like fermented milk, meat, veg, but there's really no exact science to it, with each shop having their own uh, little special blend. It's typically deep fried to give it a bit of a crispy, crunchy exterior, and chili sauce is usually added, like I just did, and it kind of offsets the aroma a little bit. However, it still smells pretty funky, so I'm just hoping that it doesn't taste like it smells. Let's try it. Mm. You know what? I'll be honest. That ain't half bad. It's really not that bad. It certainly doesn't taste like it smells. Uh, it's got the, the crunchy, crispy thing going on once you get through the chili. And then the inside, the tofu is smooth and kind of silky like tofu always is. And that aroma kind of gives it a bit of character, to be honest. It's kind of like uh, normal tofu with a little bit of an X factor. So yeah, if you can get over the smell, not bad. Definitely not the best thing I've ever had, but I wouldn't hesitate to eat it again. Six, three treasures. After indulging in our stinky tofu, I realized that these guys also sell three treasures, or sambal, and it's one of my all-time favorite Hong Kong street foods, so I had to have it. Now, three treasures is all manner of vegetables and a few meats. We're talking things like green pepper, mushrooms, tofu, sausages, and my personal favorite, eggplant, and stuffed with minced mud carp, which is a fish that is common in Southern China. It's usually a little bit greasy, but with a touch of soy sauce, it really brings out the flavor and gives it an X factor. Let's see what this is up to. Mm. It's good. The eggplant's always hard to keep hold of. <laughs> mm. Yeah, really good. The minced carp that's in there, it doesn't taste all that fishy, to be honest. It gives more of a kind of a subtle meat flavor. And then the veg is super nice. Um, it doesn't feel too unhealthy because you are getting your veggies in there. Uh, but at the same time, it's delicious, and it's one of my favorite Hong Kong street foods, as I said, three treasures. Seven, soy braised skewers. Next on our list today is lo mei, or soy braised foods, and Feze behind me is pretty much the place to come in the city for this kind of food. These guys specialize in soy braised skewers and they have loads of different types that you can order by pointing on the glass if you can't order in Cantonese. But a lot of people go for the big combo, which consists of octopus, pig offal, and turkey kidney. Now, I'll be honest, none of these things sound particularly appetizing to me, but there must be a reason that it's so popular. So let's go and see what all the fuss is about. So I've just got it. Uh, it looks mighty colorful. Uh, it's kind of orange from the soy braising and then there's a mustard and brown sweet sauce. So it kind of looks like an artist palette. Uh, let's see if it tastes as beautiful as that. Here we go. First up, octopus. Not bad. 
Um, got a seafood flavor, obviously very slight. Uh, crunchy, chewy, tastes really fresh. I'll give it that. The mustard and the sweet sauce work really well together. Kind of give it a bit of spice, but then the sweetness kind of smooths it out. Okay. Oh, one thing I have to mention is that these things don't come hot, they come room temperature, uh, which fills me a little bit full of dread about these next two things, because these truly are foreign to me. Turkey kidney, let's go. With this, it's tougher, for sure. You can feel a real crunch when you're uh, biting down into it. Honestly, it ain't that bad. It's got a bit of a meaty flavor. Pretty inoffensive, I'll be honest, it's quite nice. The, again, the sauces work wonders. The sauce is really good, especially our sweet sauce. It's delicious. Okay, let's move on to the pig innards. The grand finale. <laughs> it looks all right, doesn't it? It looks like sausage. Let's see if it tastes anything like that. No. Bouncy, a little bit less firm than the uh, octopus. Not all that much of a flavor. Again, it's all about the texture and the crunch and sink. And with the sauces, I have to say that it is uh, quite far away from being awful. Let's try something else. Eight agates. It's only right that we end our street food tour with something sweet. And when it comes to Hong Kong street food, there's one sweet snack above all others that is a must try. And that of course is the humble yet hugely popular egg waffle, also known in these parts as an egget or a gaidanzai. As is the case with most of the foods that we've tried today, egg waffles can be found in pretty much every corner of Hong Kong. And there are a few shops that stand out above the rest. For this, we're at more agates, and these guys set themselves apart, not just through the deliciousness of their egg waffles, but also by embossing their creations with these cute little stars that make them great for the gram if you're so inclined. The recipe for these things is really simple. It's basically just eggy batter cooked between two hot iron plates. And while the plain version is very simple, you are likely around the city at different shops to find little variations on it, kind of like this chocolate one here. Now I've got to say, it looks absolutely delicious. It's nice and warm. So let's uh, dig in and see how it tastes. Mm. Yeah, there is absolutely zero not to like about that. Uh, it's got a little bit of a crunch on the outside and then you sink into it. And inside is gooey, chewy, melted chocolate. So it's basically, it's basically a chocolate pancake and it's absolutely delicious, super Moorish and uh, the perfect end to a perfect street food tour. Cheers. And that concludes our lineup of Hong Kong's eight most quintessential street foods. Do you agree with our list? Have you tried the ones we mentioned and which are your favorites? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And I hope this street food tour inspired you to try all these for yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon on Hong Kong Hoods.